I guess 15 was closer to it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hi, everybody. Welcome to another countdown interview. We uh, found a, a site, Hyped Sound. We logged on. We signed up. We loved it. We found the founder, and we wanted to have an interview with him. So we got joined here with uh, Tony. Thank you, Nicole, for producing, and Jonathan Yeager, founder of Hyped Sound, director of campaign management. Ooh, what's that about? Zen Zeta Interactive? And he is from New York. And uh, what's your sign? <laughs> what's my sign? Yeah, what's, what's your... I'm not, I don't even know. I think it's Scorpio. What's November 5th? Is that, uh, is that Scorpio? I'm, I'm gonna go with sure. I'm gonna go with Scorpio. I, I, feel like, I feel I feel like that's something where people, uh, you know, if they're ske sketchy, don't think your ID is legit at a bar, they'll ask you what your sign is. Like, <laughs> do I even do I even know what my sign is? I mean, yes. my, I mean, I'm 25 and my ID got bent in the dryer and it's from Virginia. So anytime <laughs> I go to a bar, people look at me like I'm a little crazy, but I always get in. <laughs> worst comes to worst, I can show them my student ID from what seven years ago. You know, it has the same picture and the same date of birth. So there you go. New York is pretty lax anyway. But uh, hello everyone, I'm glad to be here. Uh, Jonathan Yeager, as they said, uh, I uh, run HypedSound.com. So glad to be here. Thanks for having me. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> Tony, are you there? Yep. There okay. we go. You hear me? Yeah, I can yep, hear you. Yep, loud and clear. All right. See, that's the great thing about Google Hangouts. Huh? <laughs> so anyways, John, we were talking before, and I, I didn't want to get all ahead of us because we were talking about some good stuff, but let's just give the basic, uh, you know, these listeners an idea of what is the overall concept behind uh, Hype Sound. Right, so the overall concept, it's a creative community. You can upload all your content um, to one simple and clean profile and also sync with your existing social networks. So that means it's sort of like a portfolio look at all your content from across the web. You can pull things in from YouTube, SoundCloud, Instagram, and just have it all showcased there. And when someone follows you, you know, they'll see all your updates uh, from wherever it's coming from, all sort of updated in one place. And, uh, you know, we're looking to expand. We're going to be adding social networks all the time. We're going to be adding new discovery features. So, you know, you can think of it almost as your own standalone website portfolio, but with a community aspect attached to it. Like a press kit, right? Right. Uh, some people have compared it to a press kit. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know, ask, you know, the people who care about community stuff, they sort of ask, what, how is this different from this site or this site? And the people who already have their stuff aggregated in one place on their own website, they ask, you know, why do I need something like this when I've got my own website? And, and really, the, the, the problem I found is that a lot of people, you know, they share their social networks. They're like, check out my new update on YouTube. You know, check out my new audio track on SoundCloud. Check out my new pictures on Instagram or Flickr high-definition video on Vimeo, like, they're constantly putting out all these links, and really yep. there's there's a lot of noise out there, and it's really hard to get someone to see all your content. So if you had one centralized place to have that, and I know websites are great, you know, you find someone's website off Google, you see what they're all about, you brand it yourself, but at the same time, it's, it's hard to get people to keep coming back. So what oh. I'm trying to do is, is, is put the two ideas together where... You know, it's still a community. You, you still join. You follow people, just like on other sites. But you've got all the content in one place, and we try to make it as neat and simple as possible. So you sort of showcase everything you're all about, and uh, you know, it's good for the community members who follow you, and it's good to share that link to all your your existing fans, so they can come and see it. You know, without you having to share all these five different social networks at one time. Yeah, I mean, you could just say, hey, you could find us at Hype Sound, you know, yep. you know unsigned countdown, and then right there, it links all their Twitter handle, just like you said, link, you know, it gets all that, but in one night, nice and neat little organized web page. Right, I'm on, your, I'm on your uh, Hype Sound profile right now, and I can see, hey, look, here's your Instagram stuff, you know, clicking, here's your SoundCloud stuff, here's your YouTube stuff, you got a little audio track directly uploaded, so... You know, obviously there's more customizations we have to add, but, you know, you've already got a pretty good look at a lot of the stuff you do. Yeah. When, when did Hype Sound actually go live, this version? So the, the new site went up on New Year's Eve, you know, coming into 2014. So we're basically hitting about a few months in. 
Um, it's a, it's, I don't want to call it a slow rollout, but it's sort of an open beta period. I'm sort of in this, this period of time where there was an old Hype Sound website that me and a friend put some money in together. And, when, did, uh, when did that start? So that happened about back in college four years ago. So, oh, okay. Gotcha. So we started building about four years ago. Let's see, when did it go live? Um, I want to say, you know, 2010, um, summer 2010. Um, and it was a music website with way too many features. Had no idea, you know, I was into music, big into music, but had no idea how tech worked, no idea how to hire a development company or a designer or, you know, how to do any of that myself. So it was essentially yep. me, me and a friend putting together some money, hiring a company offshore off one of these sites that lets you put up a project and have people bid on it. So we had about 60 different companies. You'd be like, let me do your project. And uh, the budget, you know, wasn't, uh, you know, not the kind of budget you could hire a New York-based design firm to build, development firm. It's not wasn't one of those types of things. It was uh, a bunch of teenagers, or two teenagers, you know, putting together some money with an idea. And uh, we really, you know, we built a site that uh, had way too many features, but it was very music-centric, and luckily... You know, there was still, this was a while back, so we still got a, I hustled a bit and got a lot of users despite the, the fact that it was a very slow, clunky, not particularly unique site, um, and I kept that going for a while and finally figured out, okay, well, let's, let's do something legit this time around and, uh, you know, put the money in but also put the work in to get a quality product and then fast forward a long time and a lot of uh, life experiences and now we got the new site. So you guys were do you started this in college or right after college? Uh, in college, so I was um, I was lucky to get a bunch of uh, advanced credits to graduate a little early from college, and I uh, had this summer and then a semester with only two classes um, before graduating. So I had a lot of free time on my hands. So I was basically just working hard on hype sound and uh, getting it launched. Unfortunately, sometimes you learn some stuff when you you go into business with a good friend of yours, and oh, he, yeah, he you do. <laughs> <laughs> he, I mean, there's no bad blood now. He, uh, the person who put in money, my friend, uh, you know, he ended up not working on the project, but we came to an agreement, and uh, he he's not participating in the new site, and I, uh, I, we came to a good arrangement where I returned his investment despite the fact the old site didn't really take off. So. You know, he's always been a great friend of mine, one of my best friends from college, and, uh, you know, luckily everything turned out okay, but good, at the good. time it was a little strange, but everything worked out just fine, and uh, I, I just sort of kept the site going all these years just because I always knew I wanted to do something with it. I just didn't have the idea or, you know, the team to do it or the, or the financial resources to hire someone to do it. So I was sort of in this awkward period where I was very interested to do something bigger, but wasn't quite sure what. Right. Yeah, because you, you know, you got this is like the most ideal thing for Jason at this <laughs> point. So you'd be prepared because you've got a new stalker now. You know, that, right? <laughs> no, I mean, I don't know if you've heard the idea of like a thousand true fans. This is true for any business or any you yep. know podcast or any. Um, you know, artists, you know, you can't really go anywhere if you don't have that core group of people that really care about what you're doing because there are a lot of, I don't know how close you follow the tech industry, but there are a lot of companies that come up, they find a way to game Facebook and get a lot of traffic or yep. find some spammy way to send you push notifications on your phone. And sure, maybe, maybe you'll get lucky and you'll raise a ton of money and someone will buy you out quickly because they think you've got some you know, great thing going when really it's all just a <laughs> house of cards. But, yep. uh, you know, that's that hasn't been my plan here. You know, I'm not even looking for investors. I'm just looking to continuously build the product. Sometimes it's slower when you don't have all that those resources behind you that you would you might have if things sure. went another way. But at the same time, like, you know, I things are going well and I sort of have this quote unquote infinite runway to experiment with things and uh, sort of build that core community before I try to you know go out further. That's awesome. I love our three fans and I'm looking forward <laughs> to getting four so the, the, the organic is so much better than buying them. Yeah I mean 
especially with, with sort of our business or I don't know if you want to call it a business or community or whatever you want to call it, even if community. it's just a hobby. It is a community, yeah, absolutely. Regardless of whether it's a hobby or a business, you know, it still takes time, you know. Unless you're like a famous name, you can't just have an automatic audience off the top. It takes time to sort of get that snowball effect going, so to speak. Yeah, but we're both in demographics to where that's possible. True, did, true. Did you want to give a shout-out to the designer of your site? Because I noticed you have that crisp, clean, popular feel going on. Yes, yeah, so the designer, um, I worked with a guy named Stellan. It's a duo. Act. He's one of two people in uh, Sweden. Uh, they're 1910 Design and Communication. So the website is weare1910.com. And uh, they've actually got a quite a quite a following there on uh, Behance, which is a portfolio site for designers. They're on Tumblr. Um, they actually had a, a bunch of popular blog posts that I don't want to say they went viral, but they've got a lot of coverage yeah. on you know The Verge and Hacker News, and gotcha. they're they uh, you know they they've got a good thing going, and uh, they they've worked on a lot of video games, and uh, they've worked on with some record labels, they've worked with me, so they've got a lot of cool things going. Um, I'm actually going to meet the designer for the first time. He's going to visit New York in a few months, so it's kind of cool when you're working remotely, talking to people on Skype every day, right. and then you actually get to meet them in person. It's a it's a little bit different, so it's kind of going to be kind of fun. It's cool. I like that. That's exciting because I like the look and feel of the site. Right, and it, and it's interesting to see everyone's opinion on it because. Overall, the feedback has been great, um, and I'm very happy with that. People love how simple and easy it is to use, and they love that it's sort of crisp and clean. The content, let's speak for yourself. You got a lot of content. You got to figure out how to showcase it without overburdening people. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, there's been people who who don't like it. I mean, it, it's not going to be for everyone. Um, there's a there's a lot of white space. You know, I don't know if that's going to be filled with features later on as we build out the site, but you know, some people, you know, the green isn't going to speak to everyone. Um, it's not overstated, so some people are, are going to want to think, okay, well, maybe I want to brand this a little more. Maybe I want my own backdrop, maybe this and that. So there are people who have their concerns with certain things, and a lot of them are legitimate. You know, you can't give everyone everything that they want, but, uh, you know, I take all the feedback, and uh, it's going to evolve over time, so we're just going to have to see where it goes. You know, I think people, what they really want is a part of them on the screen as well. And giving them the option to have, like, a theme control is, you, you know that as well as I do. It's, like, the biggest cry out there, you know, that people yell about. And, and, they, and if they're, they don't find it, you having it available, they're going to find a third party that's going to do it for them. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, hell or high water at that point. Right, I, I definitely see what you're saying, and the thing is, there, there's there's also you have to look at it not just from a design perspective, but from like a technical, just the way the the site is built, and you know there's only so many features you can build out at once, and if sure. you look at the way MySpace evolved, for example, that's sort of a what's that? <laughs> yeah, what's that? <laughs> it's a, it's sort of a, a textbook story of you know how what, they just let everyone they had. They ha they let everyone have free reign over their site, and yeah. you know, then you start seeing people going like glitter all over their profiles, and <laughs> things just started to get bogged down with images, and it loaded slowly, and you know, they had their music player, which was pretty clunky as well. So it's tough to allow people to just have free reign to do whatever they want, and also maintain a well-functioning site. So. Right now, I don't necessarily have unlimited resources and team of, you know, 20 people sure, sure. to add all these features, and so I have to be very careful as to what I prioritize, and while I think it's great to be able to brand your profile in a way that suits the site as well as your own sort of personality, you know, it's also important to know that it's not going to be good for users, even if you have your own branding, if your website, if your profile loads five seconds slower. I mean, you can look at all the, the tests right. that show that if you lose people in a split second, I mean, Google, all they care about is speed at the beginning, you know? Yep. You know, that little millis the hundred milliseconds can crush sales or crush search queries. So you really have to make sure that 
you're providing experience not just for the members but also for the people they're trying to promote the site to. So, you know, especially at these beginning times, I'm not really dealing with these specific customizations, but certainly in the roadmap, thinking about what I can do. Yeah, you know, I, I stayed away from your site all week just because I wanted to do it while I was talking to you, and <laughs> I think it's awesome, man. I love how you just, you know, you got all the links right underneath, you know, the little profile. You bring up the audio, and boom, you know, it, it's all the audio files out there. It's YouTube, beautiful. it shows all the videos, you know what I mean? Does it show this video? Uh, no, it does not. Jeez, hold on, hold on. Maybe if I you view more. Ah. So it should be chronological. So I'm looking at yours but right it's, now. It's pretty awesome. I mean, it, the best part that I liked was the SoundCloud because it just brings everything up. It does, and, right? And that's and that's just so awesome. And you, then you go to the Instagram and it brings all the pictures up. Yeah. This okay. is, I mean, to me, this is. It, it's simple, like you said. It's very easy to nag navigate. And this is a great thing, man. This is a great thing for musicians as well because, you know, having – before people uh, – bands used to have their own domain name. Right. Now a lot of these local bands don't want to even put the money there, and they just use a Facebook page. Yep. Right, but, right. But now you really can't put music, you know, in Facebook. Well, now you can, you know what I mean? But you still – you got your videos, and you got your – you know, yep. you, you need a place to do a digital press kit. And I think your site is so ideal. And you're looking to integrate. That. You're looking to integrate more social sites, right? Right. I mean, and and you spoke to Facebook. I mean, Facebook is one of these sort of things where you know you can do a lot of these things as well, just on Facebook, like what you're describe, what I'm describing on our site. But right. the thing about Facebook is that it's it's. You know, they're such a huge company. You know, you're you're competing with friends and family updates and other <laughs> likes from yeah. like, all these different. It, it's not a creative community. There's no community vibe going on. You've got right. the reach, which is great, but you know, and I don't know if I mentioned this to you earlier, but uh, I I run Facebook ads for a living. Like my day job is running Facebook marketing campaigns, so right. I sort of know the ins and outs of paid advertising on Facebook. And they're a public company. They're worth a ton of money, and they need to figure out ways to keep growing. Yeah. And, and and as a admin for a page, they're not gonna give you unlimited reach like you had in the past. You know, you gotta pay for it, and that's very pricey just for a few impressions. So, you know, you can't just be like, I have a new video. Let's promote it and do paid advertising. That doesn't <laughs> work. As that just doesn't make sense from a business perspective. I I think Facebook is great. For their their adver excuse me their advertising is great for certain things, but for an indie artist, they can't just pr pay to promote every video. So nope. only a certain only a certain percentage of people are going to see your video in their newsfeed, simply because people like a hundred things on Facebook and they've got hundreds of friends and family, so they're only going to see what they care about the most. Yep. Uh, and I think Facebook does an amazing job um, showing what's important on their newsfeed, and you can do some customizations there. But at the same time, as a page, it's a great resource, but it's not the end all be all. There's there's got to be something more, and there are communities that you know you get more of a, a genuine sort of engagement with. I think. You know what? I think yours is more good for I, I, the way that comes across for me right away is if I want to know about like a, a company. Right there, if they have any like demonstration videos of their equipment, it's right there. You know, if they have any other, uh, you know, their the, the Instagram photos of any new equipment that this company's got. I mean, there's a possibilities. You know, these people who do bloggings and instructional videos. You know, you know, I'm a, I'm a part of you know of the you know big vaping community with electronic cigarettes, and these guys got you know media all over the place. Your site, it just brings it all together, you know, it does. And, and, it, and it's so awesome. <laughs> it really is. It's a, and I can't believe no one has done this yet. Well, it, okay, so I, I'm going to be fair. I'm going to be fair and say that people have done it before. But, 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 but No, but here, but let me, sorry, let me just, uh, go, here, go here's ahead. where I think a lot of people, um, so what, I, what I found is that there are sites that aggregate these things all in one place, but they've always tended to be sites that are website builders. You know, right, there are, right, there's Squarespace, yes. there's Rebel Mouse. 
flavors.me, they, I, I mean, the sort of cardinal rule of business is not to, you know, promote your competitors, but what I'm, what I'm trying to, what, <laughs> I'm, just try, what, I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to get at is that these are, these are great website builders, but there's no community aspect to it. There's no way for people to continuously see, see your stuff. And there, there, I could name probably five other websites that let you aggregate all this stuff. But really, what I found is there's no way to discover it. And right. you're, basically, you're basically just throwing your website out there. You've got to promote it yourself. And, um, you know, and then you have the social networks, the YouTubes, the SoundClouds, the Instagrams, all these things that we're integrating with, the Facebook, the Twitter. But, you know, those are just your one media type or your one type of experience. And what I'm trying to do is combine these two ideas to you've got your community aspect, you've got the ability for people to continuously see your updates, yes. but you've also got it all in one place. So I, I, I don't know how many sites can, can do that right now. I, I've researched a lot. Um, some of them might do a few of these social networks, and right now we only have three, but we're branching out to a lot more very soon. So, you know, nice. we're, we're going to have that ability and... You know, it's it's not really about the idea. It's more about the execution. So there's a lot of data and integration um, technical aspects that we can keep improving on. And it's really just about what I found is making the discovery aspects a lot better on top of having your own portfolio sort of look to. Sure. I, we actually had a question from a fan concerning that. They wanted to know what the sharing aspects were going to be like. I've, right. The so, other way, like if we post a hyped sound, can we? Will that automatically share on our other social sites? So right now, it's not going to automatically share. We don't want to oh, okay. you know, force any sort of sharing <laughs> on anyone. I, I mean, some there are, there are services that are made specifically for you know posting something and having it go out on all your different networks, and certainly that's an interesting feature to add to our site, just making it easier to share content. Um, if By the way, go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I've heard of that one, and I, I know you're a fan. Um, yeah. So <laughs> we, we, do, we do allow sharing of content, of course. Uh, people do that for direct uploads as well as other content. Uh, we, we do have to improve the feature set there, um, you know, give more possibilities. Uh, but the Discover page is something that's going to evolve um, right now. It's sort of one main feed of new content. I love sort of, it. With a little bit of uh, sort of tweaks to it because we don't want to show, you know, if someone, one of the technical aspects you get into when people sync to their Instagram or SoundCloud, you realize, okay, they have hundreds and hundreds of stuff already on those sites. Yeah. You know, so you don't just want to spill out a hundred things into the Discover feed from one person. <laughs> so <laughs> you sort of discover these technical issues that you have to deal with. Um, and so the first few months of the site, there's a lot of putting out fires of issues going on the site. Feed. No, I mean, that that's just the nature of, you know, just building a social network from scratch is sure. you eat. You try to build what you can, but you know you got to get it launched, and then you realize people are interacting it, interacting with the site in a certain way, and you just want to customize it from there. So you got to minimize costs in the same, uh, you know, sense too. You know, sure. Yeah, I mean, really, uh, more than costs is I'm I'm trying to, you know, speed up the feature set process. So while cost was an important thing that I considered before, you know, six months ago, right now. I, you know, obviously I, I, I look at finances and stuff, but I want more speed. You know, I want more features. I want things to get built faster. So I'm more worried about that than, say, the costs. But, uh, you know, in terms of the Discover feed, we've got a lot of new features coming. Uh, we're going we're gonna to customize it so it's not just new content, but also trending popular content with our own spin on how to showcase that, but also tagging. So, you know, you, you can customize your search for moods, styles, genres. You know, let's say you want to see the popular new content in metal or symphonic metal or disco or new disco or yes, new disco. You know, definitely. New disco. There's new disco? Yeah, new yeah. N U disco. You've heard of new metal, right? N U metal. Oh no, they even made a disco now? <laughs> so now there's new disco. Well new disco let's not hate hate on it too much. New disco is essentially electronic music, DJ music plus disco sound. 
So you got your funky old style, and you've got I'm your so new. There. So if if you like disco music and you like electronic music, you know this could be your bread and butter. It's it's not like new metal where clearly it's a inferior type of metal, if I may What's say this? that. Like Skrillex remake, remix and do the hustle? <laughs> well, <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I mean, Swedish house band. Right, right. I've yeah. only just heard of it, but yet the band Machinery has four songs about it, so we're good. We're covered. What does Machinery have four songs about? <laughs> New Disco. Oh, okay. I didn't, so I didn't know that's that. how fast they are. He's a partner of ours. I wanted to give him a shout-out. Oh, okay, cool. Speaking <laughs> of media and, you know, speeding up things, too, and... Uh, People who are going to sign up accounts, I mean, is there storage? How does that work? Right. So this is something I'm still experimenting experimenting with because, um, you know, I, I have a technical advisor who has, who's because I'm not a developer who codes myself. It's been a very good thing to have someone who is interested in giving me advice throughout the process because, uh, excuse me, the... Uh, the people I hired to build with, you know, they, they've been passionate about the project, but, you know, when you hire someone that doesn't necessarily have a stake in the company, you know, you want to make sure that you're building the right product the right way uh, because a lot of times when you're working on a sort of a contract sort of basis, you know, the incentives in the creation process aren't always the same. Luckily, I've been fortunate to have people... Uh, great people that I've worked with and everything's gone pretty smoothly recently. But it's always been good to have someone, you know, on my team who's giving me feedback, who's been through this a bunch of times. And so we discussed a lot of the storage aspects and, you know, how we would, you know, do that for free accounts and how we would do it for paid accounts. And and sort of we started out with a, you know, a mixture in the the free account allows you to sync with three social networks and also to upload, you know, 200 megabytes of storage, um, for example. And that's not a crazy amount of storage, but we also wanted to see how many people sync with their social networks and how many people upload, you know, a video or, say, upload an MP3 that's five megabytes and uh, versus, say, someone who uploads a WAV file that's... 40 megabytes. So it's something we're experimenting with, and maybe the storage will go up. Maybe maybe the plans for free accounts and premium accounts will change over time. But I, we started with a baseline of what makes sense financially, and I'm I'm looking at the data and how people use the site, and it might evolve over time. So it's not set in stone. Oh, analytics and data. <laughs> <laughs> That's like Jason's dark cloud that loomed over his head for a couple of months. <laughs> yeah, I love the data. I love looking at the data and seeing what what worked. I just I mean, the, the the hypothesis was that many more people would upload audio directly to the site sure. uh, because they have it easily available than video. I mean, video yeah. is is Fewer people do video than they do audio, or or maybe that's not exactly true, but they might do it less often. Sure. It, it's harder to produce a video than create a, an audio track. Um, and because the early adopters of the site have tended to be more music-related, that's just the nature of the types of people who have joined. Sure. Um, so the video people have tended to sync with YouTube, um, and the audio... Sure, there's a lot of SoundCloud just because of the way we promoted the site, and a lot of DJs use SoundCloud, and a lot of DJs have joined Hype Sound. Um, yep. But you know, there are, there are people who upload audio too, and on the old uh, Hype Sound website that I mentioned earlier, that was around for a while. I mean, we had 23,000 audio uploads, and those all got moved over to the new site. Wow. So we're talking thousands and thousands of audio tracks that were just automatically on the new site on day one. And uh, you know, I've I've noticed in the you know looking at my uh, you know sort of admin section that you know we do get audio tracks uploaded every day. It's just right. you know it's it's harder to upload new stuff than to say sync with your SoundCloud. Where if you have a SoundCloud account, you know you can do it very quickly. And what I've also found is people do both. They they do the SoundCloud thing and they do the audio thing. So it's going to be interesting to see how it evolves. And I, I think things are going to change 
you know, because we're adding, going to add Twitter, because we're going to add Facebook, because we're going to add, you know, every social network that we can. Flickr, that, Vimeo, LinkedIn, right. Bandcamp, uh, Reverb Nation. Th things are going to evolve, and it's not going to be as centered around these three social networks that we allow now. And sure. they're three of the biggest, but there's a whole world out there of social networks that people use and they don't use the three we offer. So right. it's just a matter of getting that out there. <laughs> okay, so you don't have any idea about how the tiers or plans might work? Well, I mean, I have an idea. It's, it's probably similar to what we have now, but I, I think we're just going to add more possibilities. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's going to be more analytics and seeing, you know, who interacts with your stuff. Um, maybe, maybe if we have a mobile app, there are going to be some extra features there. Nice. I mean, I, I, I just want to keep it simple now because, you know, sure. I already now on the upgrade page, you know, we don't have 12 social networks to sync with. So, you know, we can't really add that to the upgrade page. Sure. And so, so that's why you know that hasn't been a pressing point for me now. Getting people to upgrade when you don't even have all the features there. <laughs> no, I mean it's 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 sort of it's, okay. It you know we wanted to have the upgrade page. We wanted to give people an idea, but at the same time we're aware that we don't have all the features there now. So if someone okay. integrates with YouTube, Instagram, and SoundCloud, you know it's not like we're going to give them a notice. Hey, you got to pay for this. No, it's free anyway. So right. in the future, if we have twelve social networks and someone tries to integrate with all of them, you know maybe that's the point where we say, okay, well, you know this is uh, this is what you need a premium account for if you want to have every social network under the sun. So cool. uh, we'll, we'll get there when we get there. Okay, we had a couple suggestions. That was the audio and video tiers. You okay, know? yeah, I'd love to hear them. And then. Uh, Oh, that was like having two tiers, and one would be audio based, and one would be oh, video okay, based. Oh, okay, right, right. Like, I think we talked about the Vimeo and the Flickr and the SoundClouds and the Bandcamps and all that. And uh, I wanted to know about verified accounts because I like verified accounts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I mean, obviously, we you know Twitter added those, but I feel like verified accounts they're more important when you get like the kinds of accounts that people don't believe that those people are on the site. Like, is this fake or is this real? Right, okay. And, uh, you know, when you have... Uh, what's, a, what's a good example? When you have Barack Obama on Twitter, you know, you want to know it's the real Barack Obama or the real <laughs> Oprah Winfrey or the real Justin Bieber or the real Lady Gaga. So that's one of those things where, sure, I'm shooting for the stars eventually to try to get these big names on the site. I don't mean Barack Obama, of course, but I mean, you know in the creative sort of industry, whether that be a musician or artist of some sort. Sure. Um, so it's, it's an idea, and, uh, you know, verified accounts are interesting. It gives reputation to, uh, to something, and even if you're not, if you're important within your niche, you don't have to be, obviously, Barack Obama or Lady Gaga, but sure. if you're important with your niche, it could be nice to have a verified account and maybe some extra perks or something like that. Um, who who would it, be your dream account? Who would you love to have on your so, site? So what's interesting is I've on the old hype sound, I never really had I never really reached out to any huge names. I just knew the site was slow, clunky, and not worthy of marketing. <laughs> so it was always this it was always this weird experience because I'm trying to get more users on the site and I did every day. But it's sort of like, ah, oh, these new these users are only there so I can relaunch the site. Sure. And have them there on day one, so so it, it it was hard to say on the old site. And what's interesting is four years ago, um, one of the very early users was this DJ named Butch Clancy. And I know he's not a household name or anything like that, but he actually gained uh, a ton of followers on Facebook, and he worked with some big names and had some video on YouTube with a dancer who got like which got like 87 million views or something crazy <laughs> something cra something crazy so I haven't actually talked to him in forever um, I used to email with him and maybe I'll get him back on the site but uh, yeah so in terms of big names uh, I talked to a DJ a few weeks ago on Skype for half an hour he gave me feedback his name's Redneck and he's a DJ who has a pretty good following on SoundCloud and Facebook yeah and uh, we talked for a while, and then actually, 
So he joined the site, and we sort of talked through a bunch of features and, you know, what could come of the site later on, and he thought it showed a lot of promise. So that was a good sign when, you know, someone you've heard of before, yep. uh, you know, joins. And actually, just uh, this week, um, since, the last bef since the last time we talked, uh, Marco Liss, who's an uh, Italian DJ, he's actually one of my favorite DJs. He does a lot of house music. And uh, like really groovy sort of deep house, and he, he he worked with another one of my favorite DJs on an album, and that's where I discovered him. And I, I sort of reached out to him, not expecting a response, and he, he joined the site, and uh, so that was uh, so that was really cool. I think I just had a random pop up come up on my computer, that's why I got a little distracted. But shut that down. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, he's Facebooking. That's what he's no. doing. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, I had like some sort of television show on a different browser <laughs> from when I was even there. Apologies. So anyway, so going back to uh, what uh, what I was talking about, he uh, he joined the site and he synced with all his social networks all at one time. So you wow. know, he liked the design, and it's cool to get these people who you've listened to their music for a while to join the site. And uh, I'm not saying they're engaged users who use the site every day. That's not where we're at right now, but it's a start. And I feel like as we provide more utility for these people, you know, you start going up the lines, and you can get a lot of people interested. I'm a little disappointed. Where it says, tell us a little bit about yourself, there's no podcaster option. In the, I in the am profile a, details? I am a musician, artist, oh, okay. or band. Yeah, you were going to talk about tags, right? I don't know where that question is in my list of questions, but you were going to introduce more tagging abilities, right? Okay, so I, I, yeah, so the tags is more about the content itself. You're, you're talking about the profile details where it's Yeah, a, yeah, yeah. I was just, yeah. I'm just busting your balls a little bit, but uh, no, no, I, I, I think it would be a great thing to add, definitely. So, so I guess that you could fall under blogger because podcasting is a blogger in respect. I, that, that sort of category is more about data for us to sort of see what our community is split. Oh, so that because, doesn't put you in a certain... Right, right. You're not going to, at the moment at least, you're definitely not falling under a certain category that only people can find you in a certain way. Um, that was put up there just because I wanted to see how people use the site and how they identify themselves. It's not listed on your profile. Um, it's going to be interesting what the split is over time and, and how we prioritize certain features. Um, so you're really just helping out the site in terms of data rather than being pigeonholed into one aspect of the site where people find you. The, the tagging aspect is more about you know, when you upload content to the site, you can, if you tag it as podcast, then suddenly, okay, someone's looking for podcast material they click on that, and they don't get, Sweet. you know, the classical orchestra playing something. They get the podcast. So you, you'll still have that there when you upload stuff. You can label, you can tag it as podcast or metal podcast, and then you'll have that aspect for it. Um, and then hopefully, um, it really depends on the sites that we integrate with, what they allow, but... There's certain tagging information that you do on Instagram or YouTube or SoundCloud, and hopefully in the future we can incorporate that data as well so we can merge that data with our data from direct uploads and just give you the optimal sort of experience in getting everything you want for podcasts, for example. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm just I'm, I'm going through this, and I, 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 just, I dig it, man. I dig it. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to break it. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, no, but it, there, there's a lot of hard aspects to this because from a technical perspective, you have to deal with all these different sites at the same time and the maintenance of those sites. And, you know, there's only a certain amount of information that the site is willing to give to you, for example. You know, they have their own websites going and their own business models, and a lot of these sites sure. are are very open. You know, the sites we've integrated with are open for a reason. You know, YouTube got big because they were early on MySpace, and they allowed MySpace to have all the embeds of YouTube yeah. and the widget. Right. Yeah. So being public helps a lot. Being very public with your data and allowing to share your content. But then they have restrictions too. I, I know 
Yeah, because I was just about to ask, can you, like, choose, you know, people who follow you, what you could show to them or what you could limit? So so right now we, we don't customize that. We're pretty much public in terms of what, what you post. You know, if you have private videos on YouTube, it's It obviously... should be like that. Facebook should be like that. I people, A lot of people will be walking around with a ton of regret. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> if if you if you have a private video on YouTube, that's not going to be shared publicly on YouTube, and it's not going to be shared publicly on Hype Sound. Right. So you know, it, it it just depends on how you label your stuff on where you, wherever you upload it. Um, but for example, what I was going at in terms of the limitations of syncing with your social networks, you know, in the past, Twitter has had a complex history with letting people integrate with it because at first. They were, I don't know if you remember the early days of Twitter, but it would crash all the time, and they had the fail whale, the infamous fail whale yep. image. Oh, yeah. And so they weren't even building all these applications. And all these companies came out building applications on top of Twitter because they were an open platform. And then suddenly Twitter's like, okay, well, we need to have control over all this. And they sort of picked and choose, you know, the winners and losers. Some companies they acquired... Some companies, they just said, no, we're not going to allow you to do whatever you're doing on our site, and they eventually failed. So, you know, you, you got to play to the rules of each site, and some sites are much nicer than others, and you, you do what you can to provide the optimal experience, uh, but you also have to realize that those sites have their own sort of initiatives. So Twitter, for example, has been a little tough because... A, a lot of people try to replicate the exact experience you see on Twitter in a different area. And because yep. Twitter relies on yep. advertising money, you know, they want their eyeballs on Twitter.com and their mobile apps. So, you know, you just have to figure out, okay, well, this is this is why this company is is open and allowing you to integrate with them and this is what they want. And you just have to build in a way that is conducive to them and also you. So you know that that makes it a little more difficult, but also from a technical perspective, you have to work through all the rules and what's allowed and updates. And for example, I told you the DJ I really like, Marco Liss, who joined. That exact time he joined, I noticed that SoundCloud was down and YouTube was down at the same exact time. How often does that happen, right? <laughs> Both sites are down. So I was like, okay, is he going to think my site's messed up or is he going to think their site's messed up? Oh, yeah, you just <laughs> so, caused a, a, Either a, that or they're <laughs> both outsourcing the, the, their work to the same person. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, well, those companies are so big. It's, it's pretty much in house, but some guy know, in Korea I've, named I've, Kim. <laughs> I've seen SoundCloud down more than YouTube, but you know YouTube goes down on occasion as well. So it was anonymous. They did it. <laughs> right. That happens more <laughs> these days. Wow. So tell me a little bit about the messaging aspect of your site. So nothing complicated right now. It, it's essentially a basic inbox where if you want to message someone privately for whatever reason, like I like your music, but you don't necessarily want to point out on their profile on a comment because you want a more depth, in-depth conversation, you know, we allow that. Okay. Um, once your account is activated and everything, you verify your email, we allow you to message people. Um, obviously, as the site gets bigger, there will be more constraints, you know, if we notice there's any sort of spam going on, we'll, sure. we'll, add, we'll add extra filters. Okay, thank you. You know what I really dig about this is that no matter where I go, I, on your site, I got a little <laughs> music bar in the bottom. I can jam yep. out to some tunes no matter where I go on your site. So That's true, like, but before you say bottom, we're, we're moving it up to the top. Um, but it'll still be there, so you you can still jam out just like you did before. You just gonna minimize um, it real small. Uh, so so the reason that we're moving it up to the top right is because uh, there's certain aspects of the site we want you to scroll easier, and uh, one of the things we found is having the music at the bottom. It's harder to scroll through a lot of content faster, um, and play audio faster when you have this thing at the bottom. And we've done some testing, and uh, it's just going to be a better experience when we have it at the top. So we're actually revamping the audio, video, photo containers, everything to, you know, you, you're going to be able to comment on specific pieces of content. You know, if you uploaded an audio 
instead of just being on your profile, it's going to have its own dedicated page with your tags and your comments. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so we're, we're really going to... That's awesome. That's a good idea. So, so the first step is for directly uploaded content. We're going to have a lot better pages to showcase that. You'll have distinct URLs. Um, nice. It's going it's to be a lot more straightforward because right now when you share an audio, um, you'll have a distinct URL that you can share on Twitter and Facebook that will link back to that. But it's still on your profile, and it's a little harder to understand, I think. Yeah. And when, when it has its own page, it'll be better for not only search engines, um, but it'll be better for Twitter and Facebook and all your social networks for sharing as well. And it'll be better for people to engage directly with that specific song or piece of content. So that that's going to be another one of the new features coming out. That's well, awesome. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say it would be better served up, up on top for the music bar. I was just going to say that. Yeah, and, <laughs> and be one, awesome. thing, one thing that I hope to do is is uh, is integrate all the, the audio content into that as well. So if you're playing SoundCloud but you switch to a file that's directly uploaded to Hype Sound, it'll play in the same audio player. So you'll have the, you'll have the SoundCloud wave, um, waveform there. But in terms of pausing and starting stuff, having one central place to do that as well, if I can yeah. synchronize that, I, yeah. I don't know 100% if we'll be able to do that soon, but that would be pretty cool too. That was the only drawback, and I wasn't even going to mention it, is that when you play one thing and then go somewhere... No, because you go somewhere else in the page, the audio stops when you leave the page, right? Right, so yeah. right now... No, I um, like that. I like that. You like that it stops? Yeah, I go on my Facebook feed and I hit a video and I play it and then I go down while it's playing and then I see some audio and I hit play and suddenly I got two things playing and I can't find the first one. Yours doesn't do that. I like that. Yeah, so that that's definitely ha don't not having that overlap right now. Uh, unfortunately, like if you were to press a SoundCloud audio on your profile and then press a a YouTube video. Uh, it's going to play in tandem. That's what so it is. Okay. Because they're different platforms, you know, there is that crossover. Sure. And I'd, I'd like to deal with that, but there, there's some things we're going to have to adjust for. Um, sure. it, it's a little hard to, you know, know when two different things are playing at the same time. But I'm hoping that we can iron out all those details. Nice. What, what about uh, mobile devices and tabs? Are you just going to keep the layout or are you going to have an app? So, so right now, um, it's a responsive design, meaning that the site adjusts to the size of your screen. So when you go on mobile, it's going to fit to your screen, um, which is nice, but ideally we would have an app. Um, I, I can't give a definitive time on that, but uh, it's just a matter of the demand, the resources I have, the team I have, whether we can build out an iPhone and Android app in the next four months or the next eight months or whatever it is. But ideally, you know, I want to see how people use the features of the site before I commit to an app because sure. you don't want you don't want to invest all those resources in building an app to discover that half of those features aren't even important. Um, so really um, I'm gonna stick to the responsive design where it's still usable on a mobile phone. But yeah, I'm looking at it right now. I you know I got a Nexus Five and it, it looks great, man. It looks great. It looks you know it's still nice, sleek, you know, and it's very uh, it's real easy to use. Yeah, the the nice thing is uh, I have a front end coder. Uh, she lives in Nashville and she's very quick with getting uh, a great responsive design going. So you know if I ever want tweaks on any new designs, um, we can get that going quick. If there are any troubles, you know, get that fixed up. And get it fitting, you know, your iPad, your iPhone, your Android, and uh, you know, in this day and age, when a third of your traffic or a half of your traffic sometimes is coming from mobile devices, yeah. you've got to be prepared for that sort of thing. I'm not saying we don't have we have the ideal experience. There's still been some hiccups on mobile devices that we're working out, but uh, you know, it's definitely essential when you send out an email discussing music to someone they check out your website. They're on the go. They need to be able to see what it looks like on their mobile device. Yeah. With, with our type of site where you're syncing with all your content, you're uploading stuff, sometimes you need a desktop to do that, but 
it's a creative community. You know, you need to be able to consume content on your mobile device. Absolutely. Everybody, you know, because people are, are always on the go. It's easier to do it like when you're on the train, you know, on the way to work or whatever, and do it then, on the downtime. And I, I sort of feel like an old person just thinking everyone talk in the tech industry, it's all mobile, mobile, mobile. And I'm like, I use my desktop way more than I do my mobile device. I, I, I still use my mobile device. I'm not, obviously, but... It's got to be the industry you're in. You know, if, it's just because I'm, I'm at the office machines. all day. Yep. You know? yep. I'm yep. at home. I'm working on my website. I, I, I guess I'm just not the ideal dem ideal person to sort of do a study on how people use devices just because of the nature of what I do but you know sometimes you gotta accept that okay well most people don't spend 12 hours a day in front of a computer doing work they they're on the go they're using their mobile phone so you just gotta know that that's how people consume content these days yeah, it's to the point that I think your personal phone is going to be your computer at one point. Everyone's just going to have a docking station, and you go to your buddy's <laughs> house and put your phone in there, and boom, you can access everything you know on his monitor and everything. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's true. It's uh, quite, quite, quite a big change. So we talk at all the avenues you got. You got YouTube, Instagram, SoundCloud. What are the ones that are you really interested in and in, in, in bringing them in with you? So, so Twitter's next for sure. Um, in fact, it's been built out, but uh, I, we're still testing some stuff, so it's not live on the site. Nice. I actually, I actually hired another developer um, specifically for these social integrations, just because I knew we had a lot of stuff to take care of, and uh, I wanted to get a second person. And uh, he, uh, he's not working full time or anything, so. Sporadically having him work on stuff, but we already got the Twitter going. It's just a matter of working out the final kinks. Sweet. And from a technical perspective, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of Python or Django, but that's the language and framework that the site is built on. Uh, there are a few languages that are popular in the startup community to rapidly build websites and applications, and uh, the, the way there's a community that builds these frameworks and uh, adds libraries and plugins that you can easily build up on. So once we get the Twitter working, there are a lot of different social networks that we can easily plug into um, and get them quickly on the site. That includes LinkedIn, Facebook, Flickr, um, and a number of others. So once we get the Twitter working and we make sure everything's going well, there's a number of social networks that we can integrate pretty quickly after. So I think there's, in the next you know month or two, we're going to see a rapid increase in the number of social networks we support. And then we're going to see, you know, outside of the ones that are easy to get onto, there might be a few that take a bit more tweaking, but we're going to be in a position where we can add those as well. Well, I got to tell you, I mean, we, we're obviously just strictly a music podcast. You know, our, our audience is all musicians out there. You know, I mean, this out there, you guys, this is the ideal place to put all your shit. If people don't want to hear, I want to fucking find my band at Facebook, that fucking suck my band, and fucking Twitter, this band. You know, we, we, we get all these bands' information, and they got four different you know, links, and they're, and they're impossible to remember, even one of them, let alone four. If you guys want to consolidate that and make it easier for your audience to get everything that you got on, on you, this is the place to do it, without a doubt. I agree. All right, well, that sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, man, because I'm telling you, there's, this could help you know, so many bands. I, right now, there's no labels. Labels are phasing out. Music industry is, is completely changing in a, in, a, in, a, in a better light, I think. But it's harder to be a musician now. Not only do you play, you got to you know play a guitar, or sing, and deal with financing and tours. But yeah. you got to be computer savvy. You yeah. know what I mean, you got to learn how to record your music. You got to learn how to do it better. You know, and you got to socialize and pump that music up. This is a great tool, and I think that, you know this helps you know these independent artists get their information even quicker out there. And it makes it more accessible for these bands to, you know, to get everything that you want on anybody in one easy place. It helps us promoters, too, because all the information is right there. Like where you're from, what your name is, 
your other links. So for me, it cuts the time in half. So any band that wants to be on the show, sign up for Hyped Sound so I can get your information as fast as possible. Yeah, yeah. don't be a lazy fuck and send Jason <laughs> crazy links www.germany.com <laughs> dot my fucking band that you can't even pronounce it. Well, here's the th in in our blog real quick. We have the name, the band names, of course, that we're promoting, and that band name you can click on, and it will take you to, you know, their best site. I usually try to do the SoundCloud. I've been trying to do the Facebook. Now I just use the hyped sound, and I'm I'm sharing four plus links in one band name on my blog. So a fan is gonna go, wow, look what I just found from this band. So. Well, I, I, I really appreciate that you like what, what's going on there. And the one thing, I'm going to be honest, is with these new types of things, it, it's all about the messaging and how you articulate it to people and the distribution of it because regardless of how great your idea is, you still, you still need to get it out there. And you sort of notice that for some people, it clicks right away. I mean, you, you really like the idea. It seemed... Like, right up front, you liked it. A lot of people respond to me, that's a great idea. I'm signing up now. Yep. And then you have, there's a number of people who don't always get it right away. They're like, how is this different? You know, why would I want to use this? Or I'm too busy for this. And, you know, a lot of these people are, and I'm not putting them down or anything, they're, they're, I'm sure they're very busy, but they're also, they might just be doing this for fun, but they don't have a lot of time for it. But, for example, I, I told you about that DJ I really like, and I got him on the site, and yeah, he, he, sure. did it in a, he did it in a couple minutes, you know? And sure, for now, if the site's not big and it doesn't get him enough promotion and he, do, he doesn't have to spend time on it uh, right now, he could just have all his stuff there updating for him, and it's not like you're in this process where this constant maintenance, this constant, you know, okay, sure. now i got to upload this next track, so... You know, just to just to get started, we're talking about you know a very short amount of time to get started, and the community aspect you can come in and out, and um, as it grows, it's probably going to become more interesting for you, and you know you could just have it as a portfolio, and you don't really have to worry about it. So yep. the good thing is this. It's not this constant, it's not a burden. When you say, okay, well, I'm already on these social networks, I'm already spending time, well, you don't have to, this is not an extra hour every day to, you know, do. I mean, you can spend an hour if you want to, you know, engage with the community, but if it's not something you want to do right now because you're busy, you can still have that profile going for you, even if you don't have the time for it. So I think that's also a, a selling point for a lot of people who aren't ready to commit the time yet because they don't know about you yet. John, the bottom line is people are fucking whiners. We live in a, <laughs> in a, in a period of everybody. It's instant gratification. If my Windows computer don't boot in fucking 14 seconds, I want it, you know? <laughs> They want, it going. Yeah. they want it now, you know. They want it now. They don't want to wait. They don't want to have to type out a long ass URL, you know. They want to do it. They want to click one thing and take it to it. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, definitely in this. In, you, They're fucking lazy. They're all lazy. Well, this helps them. Back Tony. in the day, we used to, you know, we had to call into BBSs and bulletin boards. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder when I, when I have kids in however many years that will be. I wonder what it's going to be like when I say, back in my day, I had to use my mobile phone to do. You this will, bro. <laughs> you will. You I will. mean, every, every generation has has those stories. I'm just wondering uh, what yours will be. Yeah, I mean, I guess technically I lived in a pre-internet age as well. I mean, the internet existed, but it wasn't a widespread thing when I was born. So I still have that little small period of time where yeah. pre-dial-up that I can still have slight recollection of. Thank There's God no... thank God, I didn't have it when I was growing up, brother. Yeah, I would have been building nuclear bombs in my garage or some <laughs> shit, you know. The closest thing to the internet was, uh, was the cookbook. Hell's Kitchen cookbook, what was it? You could build all the bombs and shit? Uh, yeah, I've heard of something like that. Yeah, that's yeah. it, man. That's it. 
Well, awesome, John. I think you got a great thing going, man. Uh, we, we definitely, you know, like we, we're going to promote the fuck out of this, you know, for musicians, artists. And I think this goes even beyond, you know, musicians. This is great for businesses. This yeah. is great for hobbyists who yeah. have communities. They have, you know, instructional videos. If you've got a, 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 a audio installation place, you, you, you install car stereos, you do videos, you can, you know, you can have all your shit right there in one place, man. This is it's a great thing. I hope this really takes off. I mean, just we gotta get the word out there, brother. Yeah, I, I definitely appreciate it. Once we get this these new designs out and the new features in the next month or two, um, I'm gonna be going from this very direct community based um, outreach, which I'm still gonna do, but I'm gonna broaden it out, reach out to more bloggers, more press, and uh, recently we've. We fixed some things so the site is faster than it was before. Um, we fixed a lot of the little issues, putting out some fires. Um, now we're in the period where we're going to get a lot of these bigger features out. And then once we get that out, it's going to be you know letting the old user base know, the old hype sound users that a lot of them haven't come back to the site in a while, reminding them of the relaunch, getting those on board, see how they react. Because there's about... 13,000 people on my email list who only some of them have come back and there's a lot of people I can reach out to and be like, hey, you know, we've done this. Yep. So that's going to be the first step and then the next step after that is a broader audience. So definitely going to be pushing this. Well, Jonathan, did you want 30 seconds right now to beg for those that old user base to come back? <laughs> you have a really great site now and you can just send them here and... and you can just beg for them right now. Well, I mean, it's it's a. Uh, I don't know if you want to use the word beg. <laughs> please, please come please, back. Please, please come back. We I built this you. for you. <laughs> Life spent the last year toiling. No. Uh, it's but, all good now. It's all but, good now. So in, all, in all seriousness, um, I actually did a survey before I built this new site, asking people about the idea. You know, what kind of features they'd be willing to pay for, what kind of features would they use, how likely would they be willing to recommend this. And uh, I didn't send it out to everyone, but I sent it out to a chunk of people, got a bunch of responses, and uh, some of those people were daily users who have returned to the new site, but not all of them. So there's definitely an opportunity to re-engage the old users. Um, I'm, I'm just as excited about re-engaging the old users and getting new users on board. Um, you know, the new users have been enthusiastic because they don't know the old site. They see the new site and they like it. Um, but really, this is my sort of beta testing openly. Uh, once we get the features we want, going to get the old user base on board, explain them, explain to them what the new idea is, and then uh, going to the music bloggers, the tech bloggers, and everyone. Everyone. And, uh, just branching out. Definitely. You keep doing that. Who's funding this? <laughs> So it's just me. I mean, like I said, I, I, no. I mean, like I said, I have a day job. So yep. I mean, New York City. It's an expensive town, but uh, you know, you know, I don't live in a, an extravagant lifestyle uh, per se. Yeah. Um, no, yep. I'm not saying I don't have a little fun, but you know, I'm not uh, going crazy on Wall Street doing lines of coke as some people some people do. Not to get explicit, but. Ooh. It's you one know, of my dreams, right there. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, in New York, you know, at the beginning, I was living in a tiny room before I got my first job, and even when I got my first job, I lived in a tiny room, a ton of roommates, living in one of those New York situations. It's uh, it's not like that right now, but I, I try to keep my budget in line and make sure that I have enough for hype sound and to keep it going. Thank and that, uh, luckily, I uh, have the runway where I don't have to worry about investors right now. Um, right. Not saying that if an investor came and they prop, plopped a million dollars on the table that it wouldn't help speed up things, but you know, you have to make sure that you're building the right product um, and building something people want before you go, you go out there. So uh, that's what I'm doing, and uh, right now it's working, and I'm hoping to accelerate things. Slow and steady wins the race. Okay. Yep. I love it. All right. Well, you know, that's actually where are we at now? Yeah, we're over an hour. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for joining us, Jonathan. Yeah, well this is a this is a fun this is a fun uh, fun evening and I really appreciate you reaching out. The enthusiasm you know, this is the kind of thing that keeps me going. I mean, the the old site, you know, 
it, it was tough sometimes. I mean, I always enjoyed it. I always enjoyed the community. When people gave me enthusiastic emails, you know, that kept me going um, for all those years. But <coughs> even with the old side, I knew in the back of my mind, you know, this isn't – I'm glad you complimented me, but I was always thinking, like, this isn't really that great, you know? Like, <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Uh, but I sort of, you know, had that other side of me in the back of my head. And I know there's tons of stuff we have to do with the new site. So much more to go, but I'm I'm proud of it, and I'm proud of where we've gotten in this amount of time. You should and, be. And uh, the enthusiasm has just made me so excited that, you know, this financial risk I'm taking and the, t the time I'm spending is, no matter what happens, it's, it's, it's been worth it, you know, for sure. And uh, every day, like, it's just very exciting, you know. It's, um, it's just fun to, to keep it going, you know. Is well, there anybody? Is there anybody you wanted to thank? I mean, there's uh, there's Tej, who's my developer, who I work Woo! with every day, and we talk with on Skype. And uh, he lives in India, and I I'm hoping actually to go. I don't take vacation, but I'm hoping to take a vacation this year in you know and and meet him for the first time and go to India because I haven't traveled much recently. So that'd be cool if I did that this year. Uh, there's Stellan, who is my designer in uh, Sweden, and uh, he also works with a guy named Jonas and their 1910 Design of Communication. There's Amber in Nashville, who does my front-end coding. There's uh, my technical advisor, uh, Stefan, in Texas, and uh, uh, another developer who's starting to help me out in Texas named Cody. So we're all, I've got a lot of people I'm working with, and uh, you know I'm the only one technically running the site, but without all these other people, it just wouldn't be possible. So uh, they have all been uh, an invaluable asset, and I and I hope to keep those relationships going. Well, it sounds like you got a solid team behind you, man. Yeah, and the community. Everyone has been enthusiastic, and the people who come back to the site every day, you know, that keeps me going as well. Awesome, awesome. Well, I, you know, when you get big, you just remember us when you go buy your first G6. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm sure always big Make sure you take us with, you know, to wherever, you know, Amsterdam, you know, Paris. <laughs> For sure. I'll, I always remember you guys. I'll always remember the early adopters. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. Like, these these are the kind of things that uh, keep me going, and this is what makes a great site, you know? It's a community. It awesome, a community. man. All right, well, great. So uh want to thank your audience and everyone who I'm going to share this with, and uh, it was really great talking to you guys. Cool. Excellent. On behalf of every Hyped Sound user, I'd like to say thank you because I know they all wish they could. <laughs> uh, the Unsigned Countdown says thank you. It's a really cool idea, and we're really excited to watch as it grows and evolves. For all those, right, thanks a lot. For those listening, you can go and uh, hear this on YouTube in a few minutes. Check out Jonathan's account on Hyped Sound, and uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. And check out Jar Codes at oh, Hyped Sound. No. Oh, yeah, always. Look yeah. at that guy. He doesn't even pump his own, his own deal. <laughs> Look at that. Too, too humble. Oh, that was a whole nother section of the note that I didn't want Jonathan to have to sit through unless he wanted to continue with discussion about things like uh, New York and questions from the audience and what? Oh, did you want to be a guest judge one month? I have that down there too. So, uh, uh, sure, for sure. Just uh, let me know what uh, the situation is, and I'll see what I can do. Oh, we're gonna make sure you get the worst death metal bands possible. <laughs> <laughs> we I told you, I told you I was into metal, but uh, I guess it depends uh, the exact genre. I, I like a little melodic with my death metal. So me too. Yeah, me too. I I I I, I love the death metal, man. But after about a, a song, I'm, I need to go next. Next. <laughs> I mean, I'm all into, like, the soil work, Shadows Fall, All That Remains, Kill yeah. Switch, Eyes of Lay Dying, God Forbid is my favorite band for sure. Ooh, nice. Uh, so it, it's that bridge between your metal, your hardcore, and your melodic sort of death metal. Definitely. That's awesome. You know, you need, you need, you need this would be great for, like, skateboarding companies and shit, man. you got a really cool thing. I love it. I love the <laughs> idea. Me too. What I'm planning on doing is we were getting uh, clips from bands, like tips on how to be a better musician, and uh, we were going to 
edit those down and put those up exclusively on Hyped Sound. Cool. Yeah, definitely. So, so it'll be nice if once it gets its own page, they'll have their own bio, and it'll be the different bands. So that's kind of cool. And then we're going to put it in the podcast. So you're going to have exclusive content on Jar Codes on Hyped Sound. Ooh, okay. look at that. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Yeah, we we got uh, Travis Nowak has already done a track, and he's going to be in our next episode, actually. His, the first tip ever is going to be Travis Nowak next Monday on the cool. Inside Countdown. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, thanks for joining us. All right, thanks a lot. Have a good night and have a great weekend. You too, Hi, sir. you too, Jen. All right, see ya. Talk later, to you later. Cool. Uh, thanks for listening. This video will be available shortly and then forever on YouTube. Just search us out there at Jar Codes. We also have great interviews from the unsigned artists like Chant, Boyd Meets World, Drayton Road, Maggot Twat, our winner of last season's finale, Written in Stone, as well as more unedited recordings of our underground recap sessions. Remember, you can find us on iTunes or the Stitcher Smart Radio app by searching the unsigned countdown. Visit us at jarcodes.com or find us everywhere else by just simply searching jar codes. Join us every week to discover some of the best music you've never heard. And don't right. be a jag off. You could just find us at hypesound.com, jar codes. It'll Boom. take you everywhere. Look at Definitely. that. Look at that. <laughs> For all you lazy fucks, you go right to hypesound.com and check it out. Rub your rub your dimples against the monitor. Nice. Nicole, you can you want to come out and play? You what's going on for you in April, Tony? Oh, I got the big e sig convention going on, uh, Vape Bash. It's nice. gonna be on April 11th and 12th. Uh, anywhere in the Chicago, anywhere in the, actually, people are flying all over the United States to come out to this one. It's one Excellent. of the biggest conventions, so I'm preparing for that. Getting labels going, trying to get my flavors rolling, and you know, gonna go out there, pimp out some juice, have a good time. Meet the people in the industry, which is always fun. Nice. It's just like going to a show, but with no bands playing. You get to hang out and bullshit, you know? It's going to be even bigger than that. We're going to be running a live hangout eight hours in the day, and Tony's going to come in every once in a while, and you're going to get live action from it. Oh, all right. Ooh, sure. How about that? Sure. I'll, we I'll, can set do up, that. I'll set up a hangout like for an hour, yeah, and then you can just take us around. And show us what's going on. How about that? Look at that. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? Why not? I tried to do it last year with the video camera, but I got wrapped up talking to everybody so much I forgot I had a video camera. <laughs> See, that's where I want the Google Plus, the Google Glass for. You just put those on, and then I can run an eight-hour live feed hangout. Yeah, but then I can't. T there's no. There's no <laughs> mulligans in that. So, you know, I'm totally responsible for my actions. Totally. I don't like that. I don't like that. <laughs> That's cool. I appreciate that. So when when was it again? You got your banner going up what day? April 11th and 12th. Nice. It's uh, Friday. I think it's from uh, 12 to 2. And Saturday is from 2, 2 to 2. 2 p.m. to 2 a.m. Wow, cool. But I can figure all that out by just going to ApocalypseJuice.com on Facebook or ApocalypseJuice.com on Google, right? Absolutely. Don't forget your 15% off code, JAR codes. Ooh, that's sweet. We'll hook, a, hook you up for your listeners. So, you know, any of you guys still smoking, get rid of that shit. It's stinky. It's going to fuck you up. Fuck you up. Get an e-cig. You can fucking still enjoy the fucking smoke. Without all the bad effects. Well, not so, all of them. I mean, there's not enough for research, but it sure is fuck better than <laughs> smoking a big fucking carcinogenic bomb. Is it? Is it? Yeah, it definitely is. That's so what do you got going on, Jason? Not much. We've had a few comments about uh, bear rape. Dude, I, I, do I need to make the juice <laughs> for bear rape? The flavor, yeah. Somebody asked about bear rape, and somebody else laughed about bear rape, and then I thought about it. During editing, I was like, bear rape. So if it was like a berry and like a white grape with wintergreen, it would be like polar bear rape, right? It would oh, be, wait a minute. Oh, i got to write this down. Okay, it would be like, and you could call it brape. 
right? Because it'd be like a berry grape. Okay, you know, berry, you, know you got berry, grape. And a little wintergreen. A little wintergreen. And it'd be bear rape. It'd be like polar bear rape. Yeah, you'd you, be right there. Boom, nice. I wonder what the label art would look like for that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Adam in a polar bear in some way. That's what I'm saying. You know, we got to Photoshop a, you know, a raping victim of Adam. <laughs> hey, Nicole, are you there? Yes, I'm just laughing. Okay, <laughs> that's cool. Uh, after like months of trying to poach Nicole, I finally got her to help me out at Jar Codes, so she's going to start learning producing, and she's been helping judge the songs and some more, to help me with an email list and stuff. So thank you for thank joining. Thank you. Thank you for helping out. Definitely. You're welcome. That's awesome. I know how it is, man. Just running my fucking business, working full time, that alone, man, I might fucking... My fingers are fucking reached too far as it is. Right. And I know how much Jason does, you know. She started uh, moderating the group, and uh, so, yeah. And when are we going to start doing uh, the web page? Are we just going to leave it? We're going to start it. It's just uh, a budget thing. And we're what do doing, you need? How much do you need to do it, dude? We're doing just fine, aren't we? I mean, basically. We you could know what? Have That's what I'm saying. Just Let's just keep it, you know, whatever is working right now is fine. Yeah. Not to have our budget meeting on air, but yeah. I mean, it's I'm sorry we had like no Oh, we still live. Oh, okay. We had no votes for <laughs> March and we or February, nobody voted. I assume nobody's going to vote for uh March. We got a great fucking list for April though. So I think people are going to be back on board, but I you think we we might vote. eliminate Wait, say that again. You can get my vote on Facebook. I vote on all of them every month. Nobody voted last on on February. Nobody voted on Facebook. I'm pretty sure I did. Damn it! Damn it! <laughs> uh oh! Uh oh! You know what? We should be having someone voting. You should have a set of numbers so that you know that the voting system is actually working. Yeah. I vote on all of them because I care about the bands. Well, I assumed I would have at least like six, right? Because <laughs> well, that's one person for them to call because <laughs> I won't so, go. There. So I don't know if I were going to continue with the voting system. We might just go on whoever we pick to win is going to be the winner and move on from there. It's much easier, you know. Yeah, you know, fucking. I think so too. If if no one's participating, there's no there's no reason to keep it going. Yeah, I'm just throwing ideas out there, and I don't want to keep having to do one that doesn't work when I can move on to things that do. So, you know, whatever. Okay. <laughs> cool. Um. Yeah, that's all I wanted to talk about the countdown. I'm trying to think. Uh... What other avenues we need to to reach to get our fucking you know our podcast out there to promote? Uh, forums and I don't know. I like I like our underground group. I just wish we had a lot more songs coming in, and I wish the former bands would come back for and stuff. You know, that's all. Yeah, those fucks. That's musicians for you. They're busy, you know. They're always busy. I mean, Chant nah. right, Chant right now is doing a European tour. You know, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> Did he just get done with it, or is he still on there? I think he's still there, or maybe he just got done. The last post I saw a couple days ago, he was still there. That's awesome, man. <laughs> oh yeah. For a guy that was doing uh, his own tours, arranging his own tours from Florida to Texas. Texas to Florida, you know, to be on a European tour. That's that's awesome to me. You know what I just watched, man? Oh, what the fuck movie is it called? Artifact? Have you ever seen that? No. It's the 32nd to Mars movie. Oh, I, I heard about it. Dude, it's... I'm not, I'm not a huge 32nd to Mars, but I really respect the band. They're really, I am. They are. They're good. They're good. They're awesome. I, like I think Jared's got an amazing fucking vocals, and his brother is awesome, but oh, yeah. just after watching that movie, dude, I got so much fucking respect for this dude. I'll have to watch it. Yeah, and it's pretty much go talking about what's going on, you know, the, with the music industry. 
Yes, I saw the. I shared the video, on on the unsigned countdown when it first came out, like the clip of it. Yeah, that's when I saw it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I finally got around to watching it, man. And it's dude, yeah. It's an amazing movie. It's an amazing movie, and and, and it really tell it really it, it's an indication of what's to come with this whole music industry thing, you know. And this is you know this is only an outlet for these guys, man. We you know. I know we we give a lot of band shit, and it's all tongue in cheek, man. We, we, it really is. But you know, in the same way, we want to be honest and upfront with you guys too, you know. Yeah. Well, I want to give honest feedback. If I don't like something, I want to say why, but it's only from my perspective of the music that I like. So I, how I related it was, for anybody that thought I was angry about death metal, I want you to go and listen to the album by They Might Be Giants called Flood. I want you to listen to it for like eight <laughs> hours. Because you will hate it. But I love it. I know every word, and I know every lyric, and every beat, and it's not metal at all. But go and listen to it, because that's just how it is. I don't, I'm don't. i not a death metal guy. I want to hear the lyrics. I'm a lyric guy. That's all. Me too. I like to hear the lyrics and they'd be audible. You know, but sometimes it's uh, I need a little fucking angry growling. <laughs> yeah, but I kind of like that structured a little bit more. I'm a, you know, I don't know. It's me, math rock, right? Math rock, yeah, you are. <laughs> and poster rock. <laughs> if your poster sucks, Jason's going to hate you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> the dead will rise from my underwear. Did you hear my new punk song? No, did you make one? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The, the dead will her. rise. No way. Hold on. I, I went and downloaded... Uh, yeah, a two-and-a-half-minute punk song, and I sang to it. Nicole loves it. She said she listened to it multiple times. The dead will I listened to it once. The dead will rise. It's so bad. It's totally misfits. Wait, here it comes. Yeah, boom. <laughs> it's beautiful, right? It's awesome. I like it. I think it's great, dude. I think this is your best song so far. Awesome. Where'd you get the music from? I just searched SoundCloud punk instrumentals. <laughs> hey. <laughs> and it's perfect two you know two minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Our own Jason. You're such a freak. I love it. Well, to any band that I was mean to, you know, they can always go to Rotten Teeth on SoundCloud and make fun of me all they want. That's right. <laughs> That's why it's there. And you can find me at Hype Sound at Tony, T-O-W-E-K-N-E-E, because -E -E, Tony, my regular name was taken. Boom. So there you go. I just oh, put wow. a nice a nice picture of me. How and did you spell that? T O W E. K N E E. That's cool. It's the <laughs> middle. Nice it's, it's the middle E that throws me off. Yeah, me too. I was like, "What? How did you spell that?" Start. I know with? Tony, but where's yeah. the E in there? Interesting. In Indian, that would be Tawakani. 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 Do you have pigtails? No, that's, they were braiding my hair. This is like that's oh, okay. like it's gotta be like eighteen years old. It's about fifteen years old, man. I was like, is this the cheer squad? Is that what's going yeah. on? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, just, I am following too on hype sound. 
Wow. I'm way behind the time. See? People are like joining Hype Sound and I don't even know it. I did while I listened. I went through everything. How many people did? I hope they did. Should I end the broadcast at any time? Yeah. Okay. Now that we've listened to The Dead Will Rise. <laughs> the Dead Will Rise! <laughs> I think... Oh, no, there it is.